Generally, when you're hearing about altitude, when it's discussed with exercise or athletic performance, you hear a lot about oxygen and how there's a lack of oxygen at high altitudes. Let's talk about exactly what people are meaning when they say that. Um, so we have to start by talking about atmospheric pressure or barometric pressure, because that's what drives this. All right, so air, atmospheric pressure or barometric pressure at the location where you are is determined by how much air is above your head. So it's the full column of air above your head all the way to outer space, essentially. So at sea level, that's about 24 miles of air pushing down on you. Um, so when you're at altitudes, there's less air above your head because you're higher up and closer to, uh, to outer space. And so it's less than 24 miles, meaning you're going to have less atmospheric or barometric pressure because of that. All right, so when you are at these elevated locations, the percentage of oxygen, carbon dioxide, or nitrogen does not change compared to what it was at sea level. So for instance, oxygen is always going to be around 20.9% of the atmosphere, no matter where you are. What does change is a decrease in the partial pressure of these gases. All right, so this is going to be going down as the atmospheric pressure goes down. So let's explain exactly what I mean by partial pressure for a second. So let's look at this diagram over here. Uh, we have this simplistic diagram of the of lungs. So the left lung, we'll say, is at sea level. Um, the barometric pressure is about 760 millimeters of mercury. And again, 20.9, so about 21% oxygen in the atmosphere. The right lung, we'll say, is at Mexico City. So that's an elevation of about 2,200 meters. Um, so the atmospheric pressure there is going to be about 585 millimeters of mercury. Um, still 20.9% oxygen though. So again, both of these are 20.9% oxygen. But when you take 760 and take 20.9% of that, you get 159 millimeters of mercury of partial pressure of oxygen. This is the pressure the, that the oxygen is applying essentially to the walls of your um, alveolar sacs, pushing the oxygen into your bloodstream. So you want higher atmospheric, or you want higher partial pressure of oxygen pushing the oxygen into your blood. So again, at sea level, it was 159 millimeters of mercury. Now in Mexico City, it's only 122. That means less pressure uh, pushing that oxygen into your bloodstream, oxygenating your red blood cells and your hemoglobin. Um, so you're not gonna get as much oxygen flowing around your body. When you are in a situation where you have um, substantially less oxygen floating around your blood than normal, we call that hypoxia. All right, so less oxygen in your blood. This can occur at high altitudes, especially high altitudes when you're exercising intensely. So when you have normal amounts of oxygen in your blood, that's what we call normoxia. So that's what most of us are experiencing at sea level. All right, so when we go up to altitude, uh, just quickly go over what happens with exercise performance. Uh, short anaerobic performance is really not going to be affected. So this is single bout anaerobic type performance. Uh, it's not limited by the amount of oxygen you can get out to your muscles. Uh, and so it's not going to affect these sports negatively. Where it does affect it is long aerobic endurance-based performance at altitude. So this is going to have a dramatic decrease in your aerobic performance or your endurance performance. This is going to be because, once again, the oxygen getting to your blood and then eventually to your muscles is really important for these types of activities. And that's exactly what all of this is making harder. Let's look at this diagram here to understand exactly how much of an impact altitude is going to have on that partial pressure of oxygen in your uh, in the atmosphere, which is again is what pushes the oxygen into your bloodstream. All right, so on the x-axis here, we have elevation starting at sea level and going up to 10,000 meters, which is really really high, higher than uh, the highest mountain on Earth. Um, and on the y-axis, we have a few different things here. We have the atmospheric pressure. This PB is the atmospheric pressure, or barometric pressure, really. Um, so at sea level, it's 760. That's where we're seeing here. And then we're seeing it going down as elevation goes up, which is why this line goes in this direction. All right, we also have here, so it's the, again, barometric pressure or atmospheric pressure multiplied by uh, 0.209, which is 20.9%, which is how much of that is oxygen. 
and that gives us the partial pressure of oxygen at the various locations. So uh, essentially where I am here is near New York City. It's a, a large city in the U.S. that is at sea level. Uh, so 760 millimeters of uh, mercury of barometric and atmospheric pressure, 20.9% of that is 159 uh, millimeters of mercury of partial pressure of oxygen. If we go up to the highest city in the U.S., that's Santa Fe, and that's going to be a little over 2,000 meters or a little over 6,500 uh, feet, and that is going to uh, bring us over here to about 125 for the partial pressure of oxygen. Again, 20.9% of total pressure, which is six, about 600 here. Uh, if we go out to the highest largest uh, highest large city in the world, this is in Bolivia. This is going to be a little over 4,000 meters. This is going to give us, say, about 90 or so for the partial pressure of oxygen. So that's dramatically less than what you saw at sea level of 159. If we go to the largest permanent settlement, that's a little bit higher yet, so a little over 5,000 meters or so it looks like here, um, and that's gonna give us around 85 for the partial pressure of oxygen. If we go out to Mount Everest, which is the tallest uh, mountain on uh, the Earth, then we're talking about, say, I don't know, maybe 9,000 meters, just eyeballing this graph here, and that gives us a partial pressure of oxygen of maybe around 50 or so. So dramatically less than all the other ones I've said so far. Again, as altitude goes up, the barometric pressure and the partial pressure of oxygen are going to go down in a sort of somewhat linear fashion. In this video, I went over just really briefly what happens physiologically, especially with exercise, uh, but we need to go into a little more detail. I'm going to make another video that I will link to uh, below on this, and uh, I hope you'll come see that too because I think it's important to understand this concept.